Thank you. Hi, everyone. What a presentation. Thank you very much. So, good afternoon. We, are, we want you to, to chill out a little bit, so it's not going to be a technical talk. But we are here to tell you a short story. Uh, this is a story of a plugin, our plugin, but it's also the story of the two of us. Uh, the plugin we are talking about is called Black Studio Tiny MCA, and it's a free plugin, and it is simply um, a widget that allows you to use a visual editor inside the widget areas. Uh, perhaps uh, you have heard about the butterfly effect. Um, the beating of a butterfly's wings can turn into an hurricane. In our story, our beating of wings was the development of this plugin. The first version was built in alpha day, but over the years it had an unpredictable evolution over our personal and professional life. And after a few years, it literally brought us to the other side of the Atlantic. And by the way, it's also the reason for which uh, we are here today at WordCamp Europe. Um, as you can see, Marco and I were friends since high school in the early 90s. Uh, we were born in a small town in Italy, in the northern part of Italy. Uh, we graduated together, but we separated and went to study in a different city, very far away, and university, and we could, met, we could not meet us again. Um, at that time, the web was still in, in their infancy. Uh, Google did not exist, and then for social network, we had to wait some a decade, maybe. And we were to, um, uh, but I discovered by chance uh, um, Marco's personal homepage, we, which is recently created. So I discovered that we both had a passion in common, was the, the new creature, the web. Um, despite these uh, commitments in the, um, in, the, in, uh, in the university and the study, we, we, we started to collaborate together to build a website for, uh, for clients, yes, of course. And uh, when we finished the university and we graduated in 2002, uh, we founded our web agency, so we started working together. Uh, Marco took care of the development phase, and, and I took care of the design and the customers. At the beginning of our activity, we tried several different approaches for website building, either developing everything from scratch or using existing CMSs. At that time, WordPress did not exist yet. But uh, we were not satisfied with uh, any of those solutions. So in 2007, we created our own CMS that was called BlackRay, and that we used it for a few years to build lots of websites. And by the way, that CMS was already embedding the tiny MCE editor. So we were used to it way before moving to WordPress. But unfortunately, in 2009, uh, the PHP framework that we were using for build this uh, the CMS was uh, discontinued. So we were forced to look for, al for alternative, better prospects. Um, over the years, we kept uh, an eye on the evolution of the open source CMSs. And in the end, our choice went to WordPress, of course. Um, Mm, what we appreciated the most about WordPress uh, mm, were the easy views of, for the, of the content management system for, for clients and the fact that, it, that there was a huge availability of teams and plugins. But moreover, uh, thanks to our previous knowledge, we were able to extend the system to meet our specific needs, uh, developing plugins for our internal use. Uh, after realizing a few sites, uh, we identified that uh, for us was a big limitation, the lack of, of the availability of a text widget with, with a visual editor, uh, because clients didn't understand how to do things with HTML. So we looked for a plugin to solve the problem, but we discovered that very few existed, uh, but none of them was really working. Uh, so we decided to develop a new one, and within a half of a day, this is an email Marco wrote me uh, <laughs> on one afternoon, where he says, okay, so I'm, uh, I, I, I built a plugin that does that. And okay, looking online, we saw that many other people were looking for something working. So we, we had so much from WordPress that we decided to publish for free this plugin in the, in, in the, in the repo. 
But it was not so, so easy for us, as it was not so easy journey, because for first we took a wrong step, giving the plugin the name, one of the most <laughs> simple things, but we wanted to incorporate our brand in the name, but we wanted also to include the word DynamCA as a tribute to the, to the editor that we greatly appreciated. But unfortunately, the, the average users of WordPress uh, didn't know what DynamCA is for, uh, so the widget was often uh, overlooked in the, in the widget list once installed. Um, so after some time, we decided to change the widget name, and we renamed it the Visual Editor, while keeping the name of the, uh, of the plugin, because uh, in the repo you, you cannot change the, the URL. Uh, but th that caused us further problems, because people that w were used to use our plugin, now uh, they were not able to find it anymore in the widget list in their, in their website. So we had a lot of support uh, requests so out of that. By the way, uh, a few years later, we met <laughs> the, the, the real tiny MCA guys. Uh, they are from Sweden. They are really nice guys. And, and we shared some beers in World Camp Vienna in 2016. Yeah. And with the increasing number of users of the plugin, we had to face several challenges. Starting from the support for the, all the different ways WordPress has for managing widgets. Apart from the standard way, there's also the customizer and the accessibility mode. And also, we have al always uh, ensured the maximum compatibility with other plugins and with the, all the different versions of WordPress. Basically, we had to face scenarios that we did not consider it at the beginning. And by the way, during the um, development of the plugin, we also found some bugs in WordPress core, so it was a good opportunity to provide some patches. Our focus on compatibility has led us to create synergies with other plugins, and it allowed us to further improve the popularity of the plugin. But it's not just coding. Uh, we put a lot of effort also on other aspects of the plugin, such as providing uh, technical support for the users, writing documentation for both users and developers, get the plugin ready for translations, that we got a lot of people translating and providing um, translation in their languages. We also focused on uh, providing an ideal uh, and smooth user experience, avoiding banners, ads, or other annoying stuff. Another important aspect is the responsibility that uh, the author of a popular plugin has towards the users. A simple mistake uh, on our side could potentially break hundreds of thousands of websites, so it's really important to be careful and same thing if our account on WordPress.org was stolen. By the way, we also had some offers to buy the plugin, but we have uh, always refused them. And here's a few figures. In almost seven years of life of the plugin, there were, sorry, there were more than seven million downloads of the plugin. But it, so it became pretty popular. But it also required a lot of effort, as you can see from the number of support requests and releases that we made. Yeah, and something more happened because in 2014, thanks to the popularity gain with the plugin, with the plugin we started to receive requests from various parts of the world. Uh, from people that needed development of custom plugins. So, uh, and a real breakthrough uh, went into, in 2015 when we started working with a quality uh, outsourcing platform uh, specialized in WordPress. And we built a strong relationship with clients all over the world. In 2017, we flew in the United States to work on an important project. Uh, but beyond the conquest of new markets, we start also to participate uh, more in the community, in attending some work camps and meeting some nice people. <laughs> and, but as in every story, 
also in this one, there was a turn of events. Last year, WordPress introduced the WordPress text widget inside the core. The first version was very limited, but the following version uh, introduced some improvements. In example, the ability to use, use short codes and insert images and videos. At the moment, uh, however, our plugin still offers more features than the native one. And as you can see in this slide. To recap, we tried to imagine the possible future scenarios for our plugin. If the native widget doesn't get improved, we plan to maintain our plugin active. And by the way, we are also working on a new version. If the native widget will get better and could be a full replacement of our widget, we probably dismiss our plugin, but we will provide a way to migrate the existing widget. And finally, the last scenario, which is more a uh, long-term uh, uh, future, is where all the widgets will be replaced by Gutenberg blocks. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, we hope that this short story uh, will let you to mm, be embarked in, in uh, contributing work in WordPress because you're a bit of uh, of, of like a butterfly can change your life. So for us, WordPress was a life changer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Marco, everybody. And again, we have time for just a couple of questions. I'm going to ask the first one. Um, I've not heard Gutenberg described as an asteroid before. That's an interesting way to look at things. Having had the experience of core, taking over the role of your, of your plugin. How, how would you describe that experience to someone who is worried about Gutenberg doing the same to their plugin? Oh, well, it's something that I've read. Uh, I know it's not official, but I think that the plan of uh, the developers in the long term is to use Gutenberg for everything, not just for post content. So this is... Uh, a possibility. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. But it sounds like you're being quite uh, optimistic, quite pragmatic about it. You know, th this, is, this is the evolution of the platform, and, and if your plugin has served its purpose and, and, and you move on, that's okay. Yeah. I think that people uh, get benefits for six and more years in using our plugins. So Absolutely. if the time has come to edit, uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. I think the, it's the natural evolution. Uh, Absolutely. So, and uh, of course, I, I'm a bit sad <laughs> if the plugin dies, but uh, yeah, you know. All things must pass, as they say. Um, yeah. Do you think that there's any clash between open source as, as, a, as, a, as a community thing and business? I was very interested there about how you, how you, you showed your business had been improved by doing the open source work? Oh, yeah, I think the, the core of the, the, of, the, of the talk is that, that one. So you can benefit in your business from the open source, we all, we all know, but uh, we wanted to demonstrate with, uh, with this short, short story. So I, I don't think there is a clash. You have to be smart and you have to be uh, not only smart, but uh, you have to enjoy what you do. Yeah. And when you do something good for you, maybe it's good also for other people and you, you, you should share. That's yeah. Do we have any more questions? I don't believe we do. Guys, you're off the hook. Thank you very much for Francesco and Marco. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you.